Parrots are the third most popular pet in the world, but the number one most rehomed. Help us put an end to this. Listen to the Parrot Training Podcast, brought to you by Bird Tricks. Hey everybody, welcome to another session of the Parrot Training Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Womack. I guess I'm a co-host, Jamie Womack. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> and we're from Bird Tricks. You nailed that intro. Perfect. Today we're going to be talking about... Sleeper cages. Nailed that one too. <laughs> Sounds lame, but it's really important and you guys are not nailing it. It came up because of consults lately and we're just like... Yeah, so as we're getting into spring, you know, we've put up the course on spring hormones. If you guys haven't watched that, definitely go pick it up, check it out. But the big thing about um, hormones is they can be triggered, as many of you know, by sleep or... Lack thereof. Lack of sleep. And so what's happening a lot is we're getting a million and two freaking excuses for why their bird's not getting 12 hours of sleep. And it's, it's super frustrating because then the question for the whole consult is like, yeah, but my bird's, you know, wanting to hump my husband every time he's out or whatever it is. And, um, or it's just really aggressive or crabby or whatever, it just goes all to, the behavioral problems. Yeah. All the hormonal behavioral problems. And, and so anyway, we want to give you some solutions. Um, as you know, your bird needs 12 hours of sleep. It needs to be uninterrupted sleep. If you live in a really small studio apartment with one bathroom, I'm gonna be honest, you maybe shouldn't have a bird, all right? Uh, because your bird needs to have 12 hours uninterrupted sleep. So unless you also hibernate for 12 hours a night, your bird is probably not getting that 12 hours of sleep. So a common thing is, you know, even a smaller house, we don't have a very big house, but we have two bathrooms. In our situation, I would recommend for somebody to put a sleeper cage in one of the bathrooms, making sure that that bathroom is still temperature regulated. Um, don't make the mistake of thinking like, for example, in hotels, if you close the door and it's on an outside wall, that bathroom might almost freeze or get really, really cold overnight. So be careful of that kind of thing. But what I'm talking about is like your daily habits, you know, where can you put your bird where it's going to get 12 hours of sleep? Do you have blackout curtains? That's another big one we just went over. Um, the gentleman that that we were talking with um, had all the best intentions and it was, I felt bad wasting his whole consult on, hey man, just put up blackout curtains because I can't help you until your bird is getting that full 12 hours of sleep. Yeah, it's really hard to consult on training when the foundations aren't in place where it's a proper diet and you're not dealing with a healthy bird. Like once you have all the foundations in place and then you have behavioral problems, that's something to really analyze and figure out. But until those are in place, those are usually what's wrong and just fixing those things and lining them up properly is going to help a lot. You know, I know a lot of people try to keep their birds in areas where it's really active and there's a lot going on so the bird feels like it's constantly a part of the family and a part of the action, but sleeping there may not be a good idea because if it's your living room or a den or a place where you watch TV late or you just hang out late, ideally your bird should be somewhere else where it can get some adequate sleep. Um, also, We've heard from a lot of people who have funky schedules and we're used to that. We have, we have funky schedules, we have funky schedules. Um, and we always joke that we have no routine and it's just because every day is totally different for us and especially when we're traveling. So on the cruise ship, our schedule was putting the birds to bed at midnight and waking them up at noon. Now there's nothing wrong in changing the sleep schedule based on what your schedule is. So those of you, I know that there's a lot of you that we talk to that work nights. It just made me laugh because a lot of the grandparents on those cruises yelled at us for having our kid up until midnight. But we had her on the same sleep schedule as the birds. So even though you might be in Bermuda, you might be on a time zone from the UK. Like whatever it is for you, you can move your bird's schedule around to fit your needs. It's really important. It just matters that it's 12 uninterrupted hours of sleep so that your bird is, is getting that and it feels refreshed. I know that I'm pretty terrible when I don't get to sleep. So I think the cure all would be get some sleep. <laughs> so uh, the this next one's a really interesting concept and I had a really great consult with these with this couple who the bird was very hormonal towards the husband and they did put him in what they believed to be a sleeper cage, but the process of doing that caused other problems. So what happened is they would put their galah into the cage and then they'd roll the cage down the hallway and the bird would be lunging at them the whole time. And so what we suggested, and I'll find out here hopefully soon how it worked, is just putting a little sleeper cage, which is a travel cage, or if you have 
the space and the money for a larger cage, you could put a larger cage in another room. Like for us during the winter months, our garage is our bird's sleeping room. That is their sleeping aviaries. You know, they have these massive um, cages to be able to sleep in. But if you don't have that kind of space or um, potentially don't have that type of cage, you can use a smaller travel cage. But here's the thing, I just suggested to this couple to put the sleeper cage in another room and give the bird dinner in that cage. So let's say that their schedule for the bird to sleep is 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. The goal is to go put him in there at like 5.30, let him have his dinner, he's going to look forward to going into that cage, and then the lights go off on their own, he gets a solid 12 hours of sleep. Versus what was happening is they were putting him in the cage, it was rattling down the hallway, and then they were associated with flipping off the light, and it was starting to cause a behavior problem, even though they were really doing the best by the bird by giving it that 12 uninterrupted hours of sleep. So just a kind of a more abstract way to look at it, but don't feel like it has to be a massive cage. The purpose of a sleeper cage is to enclose your bird safely in a room that's dark for 12 hours so that he gets the pr appropriate amount of sleep. And we've even heard stories kind of opposite of that where by using a sleeper cage, I've heard of birds reminding the humans that it's time to go to bed and yeah. walking themselves over to where they know their sleeper cage is. So keep in mind, birds are just happier and healthier when they're getting that amount of sleep. And so it's really ideal to give that to them so that you're dealing with the best temperament possible. Yeah, but the big takeaway is it doesn't have to be a massive cage, the bird's sleeping. And the other big takeaway of this is if you if your bird doesn't like a travel cage, it certainly will if you start setting it up for that bird eats dinner there every night. And then it's, you know, two birds, one stone, so to speak. Now, if you need to take your bird to the vet, it already likes its sleeper cage or its travel cage. Yeah, it's no longer just associated with negative experiences. Yeah. Now it's awesome and no big deal to go in. I like that.